Hey everyone, Tyson the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Prince George here. Today we are taking a look at the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Onyx in the Magnetite Gray Metallic. So this is one step under the Limited, the full load trim. And aesthetically, from the front, you can tell it's the Onyx because of those gold or yellow, whatever you want to call them, fog light surrounds. So that is a huge indicator right there. Now, I know some people aren't a huge fan of those. I'm sure you can pop those off and get them painted or get them wrapped. Rest of the Onyx on the exterior, you can tell because you've got these 18 inch aluminum alloy wheels. Same wheels as the Limited, just with no machined alloy face. So visually, that's two of the easiest ways to tell the difference. Now, the 24 Crosstrek did get a redesign. This is a redesign year, updated platform, updated engine, updated interior, updated exterior. New front end on it, you've got that honeycomb, honeycomb, hexagonal shaped grill there. Sorry, I tried to combine those two words. You've got these black metallic wings off of it that lead into your steering responsive LED headlights. And these headlights are ridiculously bright. They're great, fantastic. Definitely more aggressive looking than the previous gen. You've got that C-cut channel that you see on all of the new Subarus, Legacy, Outback, Ascent. Foresters have something similar, a little bit different. Yeah, like it's it's a little dim out. It's getting into the afternoon, and you can see they're very bright. They're great on the side. You do get additional cladding with the Crosstrex in 24, including cladding around the wheel wells with functional vents. So it is quite a bit of cladding, but it helps protect the areas that would typically get chipped up by rocks. You've got black painted mirror caps with integrated turn signals. You've got the new style roof rails, a little thicker, a little bit more snub nose than the previous gen. I don't know if you can actually fit a set of the previous gen crossbars on it, but it definitely doesn't look quite the same. We've got tilt and slide sunroof. And then side profile of this Crosstrek, definitely sportier, more aggressive looking than the previous gen. Rear three quarter view, as you've probably all watched and seen, that is my favorite view, including those new tail lights. I love those rear tail lights. And I think it really pops on the gray. Any of the darker color, I mean, it looks good on all of them, but I think on the gray it pops, the black and the red. You also get that black painted strip between the tail lights. And that is like the Sport Forester with that black painted piece. It, that doesn't show up quite as well on the gray as it would a lighter color, but it still looks good even on the gray. In the rear bumper, we do have those backup sensors. They will apply the brakes if it thinks you're gonna hit something in reverse between speeds of one and 15 kilometers an hour. We have functional vents in the rear, and I don't know if the camera's gonna pick up the painted area behind it so you can see it's functional. It is functional, it is there. Now, to open it between the two stars, little rubber switch. Right there, backup cameras there. And there is a ton of room in the back of the Crosstrek, far more than people expect. Now, privacy cover, that's standard on the Onyx and Limited. Hides everything from the top of the seats down. Nice handle, way better than the little plastic piece that they had there before. We've got halogen cargo light. You can shut that off if you're not a fan of it. We've got grocery bag hooks on either side. You can tie those grocery bag hooks into the lower hooks and your front hard mount physical tie downs for a cargo net accessory. Cup holders, bottle holders, whatever you want to call them for tailgating. Underneath, we've got our temporary spare tire, our eye bolt, our jack, all the stuff you need to change a tire in the event you get a flat. Little mountain motif. And then handle. No power lift gate in the cross tracks. Now, if we go into the second row, you have way more room than you expect. Good headroom, good legroom, and it's it's quite a roomy interior. I'm a bigger guy, I fit comfortably. Got light and dark gray cloth upholstery with those yellow bolsters. And the yellow is the contrast color on this model, the Onyx. You've got this Caltrops pattern cloth. I wouldn't say that the cloth is any more durable than the other cloths, it's just different. Fold down armrest with integrated cup holders. We have a map back pocket on the rear of the front passenger seat. Not one on the back of the driver though. And the reason is 
the drive, there's always a driver driving the vehicle, and this is easier to grab something out of instead of reaching behind. USB A and C sockets make charging really easy, keep everyone connected for those longer trips. We have easy access to the latch system, the lower anchors and tethers for children, car seats, little mountain motif on this. Now this is grippy. That is designed to be a step if you're loading something on the roof rails, which is really, really nice. It's handy. The reason they've done that is if you stand on the tire, the tire sits inside of the fender. I'm not touching it. Like there's a bit of space and you're not going to get as much of your foot on that as you would there. So that's a safety thing. We also have this little black plastic piece it ties into the subframe. And we've got this bar out of the door. That's an extra crash safety bar. So that locks in place. And that is designed to reduce egress into the cabin in the event of a side collision. Door panel, light and day, light and dark gray, hard touch plastic. Armrest is soft touch, contrast, yellow stitching, power window, bottle holder with a little bit of storage. And then should you need it, child locks. Now, with it being push button start, you just have to have this fob on your person, in your bag, in your backpack, something like that. All you have to do, touch, and it's locked. To unlock it, so long as the key's within 46 inches, and this is the same to lock it, the distance, put your hand in, and it unlocks. And those lights flashed. Now, I had the lights on, just so you guys could see them, so I'll turn those off. So the front door card looks very, very similar to that of the rear door card. Exception is, this is soft touch, which is nice. This armrest is squishier than the other armrests in the lineup. It's interesting. Contrast, more contrast. Your four wind power window switches along with window lock, power lock, power mirror adjustment. You've got a bottle holder with a little bit more storage than in the second row. And this is the first trim level where you get a power driver seat, but look at that. Great interior. Power driver seat, including lumbar. Lumbar, this is the first year you get lumbar support in a cross track. And then you have these beautiful seats. Now these seats are designed to reduce fatigue over long driving distances by reducing the amount of vibration that your pelvis experiences and pelvis vibration movement causes fatigue. So really beefed this up. HD foams, it's great. I'm really, I'm wait, still waiting for the technical paperwork from Subaru on that because I'm curious exactly what it, the research was. When I get that, I'll share that with you guys. We do get the aluminum alloy pedals, with the rubber grippies. Scroll wheel for the brightness of the gauges. And then you have your faux carbon fiber trim and that does travel from off of your door panel, tying it all together. Now on the inside, push button start, foot on the light, on the brake, light goes green, green means go. Blind spot detection indicators on either side. It'll illuminate orange on the corresponding side when someone's in your blind spot or going to be in your blind spot. New style steering wheel that you see on pretty much all of the Subarus now. Heated wheel. Now the heated wheel does not heat between the seams, just where you're supposed to keep your hands. There's a little dead spot down there too. Left hand side, we've got our audio controls, our volume. Used to be this toggle, it's now left to right. That toggle changes our small little upper display that gives us different information depending what you're looking for. Switch between presets, go to the next radio station on AM, FM, Sirius XM, switch songs on Spotify, whatever streaming service you have. Source switches from AM to FM to satellite to aux to Bluetooth, etc. The little eye button here. If you get a little red eye that pops up, like the letter I, kind of like an upside down exclamation mark, it'll tell you what it is. If I drive with the seatbelt undone and I exceed 20 kilometers an hour, it pops up. Accept phone call, hang up or decline or mute, issue voice command, or if you press and hold, you'll gain access to Siri or Google Assistant if you're using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, which are both wireless in this. Right hand side, we have our adaptive cruise and our lane centering. Now, both of those use these three cameras. So you've got the two camera boxes, and then you have this new third wide angle mono camera that increases your field of vision from left to right and visibility in the cross track. That's really good. I'm happy with it. I think it's great visibility. I mean, everyone's mileage is gonna vary with that. But when I use the adaptive cruise, I turn it on, I get an image of the cross track there. And you'll notice there's four bars ahead of it. That is the follow distance behind the vehicle ahead of you. You'll follow that if you catch up while using cruise. So four bars is the max. I can shuffle that down to one or two or three. And that is just from these buttons right here. So four bars, when I set it by pulling down when I reach the speed, those three horizontal lines will change into the speed to whatever speed I have it set to. And I'll follow behind the vehicle ahead of me if I catch up. 
So four bars, 150 to 180 feet, generally a safe distance. Now you notice the little white lines, gray lines popped up there. Uh, I turned on the lane centering portion and that's what that steering wheel is. Above 60 kilometers an hour, if the cameras can see the road lines, it'll illuminate white, same color as those front bars on either side. And when it does that, you'll get gentle steering input either way to help keep you in the middle of your lane. Very, very handy for a long day of driving. I'm a huge fan of it. I didn't think I would be, it's great. Give it a chance or have your salesperson demo it if you're taking one out for a spin. Intelligent drive mode and sport drive mode. Intelligent is for everyday driving. Sport is for more spirited, faster driving. Use more fuel, you sit at a higher RPM. It's fun to drive, good for passing. You can do it on the fly. Onyx also gets the yellow gauges. And as you can see, yellow contrast stitching on the steering wheel. We do also have paddles, upshift and downshift on either side, very, very handy. Manual select your own gears, even with the automatic CVT. And then we have our 11.6 inch touchscreen. You can see this dash. It's a good looking dash in the Crosstrek. So 11.6 inch touchscreen broken into three portions. Top portion, got what we're listening to, widgets. Now I can change those. I simply select the one I want. Hit which one I want to change, calendar. There you go, you can see it's the 27th. Weather, that's part of the three month trial to satellite radio that you get with most new Subarus. And then we get dual function X mode. And this is the first trim level where you get dual function X mode. So X mode is like four by four low in a pickup. Got snow dirt, snow dirt, rough terrain icon, downhill descent control icon. So you're, it only works up to 40 kilometers an hour. If you exceed 40 kilometers an hour, it kicks out and goes back to normal. Then we have deep snow and mud. And you can see it also turns off traction control. Those two stay the same, but that allows for excess wheel spin to chew you out of that situation that you've found yourself in. Very, very handy. I did do a video about X mode. You'll find that I think last year or early this year on an outback going downhill. Uh, center portion of the 11.6 inch touchscreen. We've got radio, we've got media. Media is Bluetooth, aux, USB. Phone allows you to hook up your phone for Bluetooth. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You will gain access to the My Subaru app after the vehicle's registered in your name. Turn off the display. You'll gain access to the My Subaru app. Car info. Driving statistics. You can set maintenance reminders. Below that, we have our home button. Looks like an open envelope or a Monopoly house. You can disable the auto start stop. Hitting the vehicle takes us into vehicle control, driving assistance, and more settings, things you can play with. You can hook up additional phones and set your own driver profiles if you want. I personally don't see the value in the driver profiles, but they teach their own. If you find value in that, let me know why you like it. I'd love to know. Audio controls on either side of the center, tune and volume knob still. And then we have our climb controls. We do have physical buttons and it is dual zone climate, or I can simply click it, brings it up, and I can just click. I can drag, turn on AC, I can control where I want my airflow. Super easy to use, easy to sync it back to just driver controlled. Got nice big fan strength buttons. I can have it focus on the entire cab, or I can just have it focus on the front. Now, something interesting, if the AC light comes on, even in the winter, just let it do its thing. It means there's moisture in the air and it's moving air around so you don't fog up. It's not making it cold. Max AC, that's the cold stuff everyone thinks AC is. Below that, we have two USBs, A and C and an aux. Wireless charger with a light. Now, if I turn all of the lights off, it dim well, down, it dims, but that is on all the time based on your auto headlights turn it off but 10 watt wireless charger so your phone is going to get warm while you're using it and that is normal don't be alarmed by that it does it, it does charge your phone fairly quickly center console automatic cvt with manual mode that's where you would use the paddles to manually select your own gears i like this shifter boot it's a nice feel to it not that you're going to be av actively grabbing the shifter boot but i do like it i think it's a nice touch to it Heated seats, high and low, for both the driver and passenger. If you leave them on and you use the remote start from the app, they will turn on as well. Parking brake, pull up to turn it on. Now my foot is not on the brake and I push down. To press the brake pedal, foot down and push. And it's off. We've got these nice offset cup holders. They all have drink razors in them. 12 volt outlet, 
a little bit of storage, and in the armrest, I know it's kind of hard to see because it's dark, pretty deep amount of storage, places to run cords out of, but there's no power point in there. So I think that's a bit of an oversight. This right here, soft touch armrest, it is nice. Now, something I didn't show you, when I put this in reverse, the back of camera pops up. Reverse automatic braking, parking sensors are active. It shows you the top of the bumper, so you have something to relate to. And as I turn that wheel, those lines move, show you where you're gonna end up if you keep your wheel turned that way. Now, I can actually clean that back of camera by pulling back, which seems gimmicky, but it is one of the best things ever, especially here in the north. I love it, huge, huge benefit to that. Up top here, we've got our map lights. We've got SOS and roadside. That's part of the three-year trial to the My Subaru Connected Services you get with most new Subarus. Door switch just means that when it's pulled to door like it is, lights come on when I open a door. And then we have our sunroof controls. So it is tilt and slide, and it is a regular sized sunroof. So shut that off. That is a quick look at the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Onyx in the Magnetite Gray. I'll just give you guys a final quick walk around of the Onyx Crosstrek. This is probably the most popular trim level of Crosstrek that we sell. It's right behind the Wilderness, but the Wilderness only came out a little bit ago, so I don't have full stats on that. But good looking Crosstrek, very, very sharp looking. The redesign is great. If you have any questions about this Crosstrek behind me, or any of the vehicles in our lineup, any of the tech, or something related to Subaru in general, put it in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer you guys' questions about it, if I can. If I don't have an answer for it, I'll try to find out for you. So, thanks for watching. I'm Tyson, the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Prince George. We'll talk soon, guys.